Humble 251, or the Common 251, how do you spot them in the wild, yeah? The 251 is one of the most common chord progressions, chord progressions in jazz. And therefore learning how to spot them in your charts is going to be really helpful for you. And putting them in your hands is going to be really helpful for you. So the common 251, how to spot them, that's the topic of our video today. Okay, first of all, just a quick explanation of what a 251 actually is. Now we know our major scales and we're just dealing with major harmony today, not minor. Makes us some interesting 251s, but not today. Today, here's C major, keep it nice and simple. So our 251 is literally the chord built of the second degree of the scale. There's the second. One, two, the five. One, two, three, four, five. See the fifth degree of the scale and the first degree of the scale. The one. So we've got a two minor seven, five dominant seven, one major seven. So that's what we're dealing with today. That's the quick explanation. Now, there are videos that you can go and check out that talk about the degrees of the scale, which will help you. Today, we're talking about the two, the five, and the one chord of the major degrees of the scale. Okay, so. Why? Why do all this? Well, um, we have already in our videos looked at the minor seven sound, and these are all um, minor seven chords. We've done a video on those, and we've done a video on dominant chords. Dominant seven chords. We've also done one on major seven chords, and we've talked about some of the sounds that you can get from these. So we, we've discussed some harmony so far. In fact, we've had a good scrutiny of minor seven, dominant seven, and major seven. So that probably gives you a good clue of why we're going to end up doing two five ones when they cover minor seven, dominant seven chords, and major seven chords. You know, it's the next step. So why though? It still hasn't really said why, has it? Why is because harmony is effective and is exciting when it moves. Now I'm always playing two fives here, but say say we'll do some other type of harmony. Yeah, the movement between those two dominant chords um, create interest, and so like we we have things called chord progressions, and. <coughs> Obviously, 251 is one of them. So, chord progressions. What is a chord progression? Well, it's just a movement from one key. No, no, sorry, not a key. From one chord, one harmony chord, to another. So, that's still 251. We're going to. Still 251. So, any chord to another. So, like, all genres have it. It's not like this is a sudden thing that jazz invented. For instance, the classics have your um, perfect cadences or imperfect cadences for that matter or which is a 2-5 <laughs> so or plagal cadences but they're just from one chord to another so it's a progression and there's lots of chord progressions clearly that are sort of common although as more I play the more I realise that most chord progressions are common, it's more what you do with them. Um, I suggest with these chord progressions you make them, how should we say, the start of the creative process, not the end of the creative process. You know, learn these, put these in your hands and understand chord progressions, but don't make them the sole being of your song. Mess with them, and I'll show you how you do that later on. So we're learning how to spot our two five ones. One we're going to spot. See, I've been playing all these chord progressions. So many of them are just two by ones in different different ways. Like they're very, yeah, you know, very pretty, and they're useful, useful in our stuff. So, common one. So we're going to learn the common chord progression two by one. Get them in your hands. I'll show you some good voicings later on once you've learned how to spot them. Exactly now, a bit more detailed explanation. 
So we'll do it in a couple of keys. And we'll go all the way and C. Now C is all these notes, right? So, and when you build a chord, you just build them on thirds on top of each other. Now, granted, there are other chords. Just, but let's not get too carried away. Let's just think about putting thirds on top of each other. Now, if you take the second degree of your major scale and go build a chord of thirds, you end up with a minor seven chord. This is your two chord. So the two chord of a, of a two, five, one in a major key, because we're in C major, a two chord is a minor seven chord. Okay, next, let's go. Of the fifth degree of the scale, and we build our key, our chord <laughs> in thirds, key and chord. And I suppose they both start with C and K, that's why I keep mixing them up. Anyway, we build our chord going up in thirds, being diatonic. Remember, diatonic means we keep our notes within the key, so there's no temptation to go and get a G major seven there. We don't want that, we want this G. G dominant seven. Now I'll say this again because I say it all the time. Dominant seven is never written dominant in the chord charts. It is just G seven. But that means your seventh is a flattened seventh, not a major seventh. So the five chord of a two five one is G seven. Or sorry, it's, it's dominant seven. It's not always G seven, is it? In this case, it's G seven. And then of course the one. Much easier to understand, really. It comes off the one, the do, the tonic, or the you know, the first step of the scale. And we build it in thirds, and we have our major seven chord. Again, a lot of this stuff has been talked about in other videos, so I'm pretty sure you're comfortable with this. One, three, four, seven, sorry. Your one chord is a major seven. So therefore, a one chord in a major key is going to be a major seven. So your two, five, one is going to be... D minor 7, G7, C major 7, or if you did it in D major, E minor 7, A7, D major 7, 2, 5, 1. So that's how you find your 2, 5, 1. So that's how you define them. It's the second, the fifth, and the first of your major scale. Okay, minor 7, dominant 7, major 7. This is how you spot a 251. Look in your charts. If it goes minor 7, dominant 7, major 7, there's a very good chance it's a 251. So, your first, first skill for spotting 251s in the wild is look for minor 7, go into dominant 7, go into major 7. Yeah? Let's do it in D major. E minor 7, A7 to D major 7. Right? Minor 7. Okay, now, the other way, or the next thing you look for, is where do the roots move? Meaning the root of the chord, like so, the root of C is C. The root of F is F. The root of G is G. Okay, the root of the chords, what do they actually do? Well, the root of D minor 7 to G7 to C major 7, which is a 2, 5, 1. That's a 2, 5, 1. One and C major, the roots move in fourths. Look for it. And then you have your two, five, one. Look for roots moving in fourths. Minor seven to dominant seven to major seven. You have a two, five, one. Let's see that in D major. Right? So the two is E minor seven. Here's your five. There's your A7, D1. I'm not always doing good voice leading here because I want you to just see where they come from in the chord. Sorry, did it again, didn't I? See where they come from in the key. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Two, five, one, root smooth and fourths. There's the two, E minor, to A7, to D7. They move in fourths. So, okay, second rule for spotting your two, five, one. Is they're going to move in fourths. Now another good way of spotting it is they also work backwards 
around the cycle of fifths. Now, the cycle of fifths, we'll do a, a separate video on it and we'll go into all sorts of things about the cycle of fifths. This, I think, is possibly the first time I mention it. Possibly not. It's a really useful tool and by its title, it talks about moving in fifths. The order of sharps and flats go in fifths. So you're going C to G is a fifth. Right? C and that goes from no sharps to one sharp. And then we go up another fifth to D, two sharps. Right. It takes the cycle of fifths. We'll tell you your numbers of, like, you go to A, it's three sharps. E, four sharps. B, five sharps. Now, the cycle of fifths is just moving around the piano in fifths. So, like, uh, I know we that's our lowest note. We're starting at C, G, D. And the keys go, and then when it gets up to here, instead of calling it, oh no, I've gone past the thing. So we'll just that was an F sharp. Come down here. When it gets up to the F sharp, well, it changes to G flat, and it just keeps going through flats. And you got D flat, A flat, and then you'll see it goes you know, E flat, B flat, F back to C. Oh, gone past the F back to C. A full circle. Okay, and that circle we use almost like a template, like a science to help us with all sorts of things. The orders of the sharps, the orders of the flats, um, in the key signatures, how many sharps and flats are in your keys, all sorts of lovely things. And here's one of the little tricks is the 251 goes backwards around the cycle of fifths. Now, the jazzers often turn the cycle of fifths around and call about a cycle of fourths. Didn't mean a complex things, but I have, haven't I? Yeah, well, anyway. Um, don't worry about that. We will talk about the cycle of fifths or circle of fifths uh, in another video and really explore it because it is really, really useful both ways. But all you need to know if you're going backwards around the circle of fifths, so like so, there we have the first C, G, D, backwards around is D, G, C, right? <coughs> you have a 2, 5, 1. B minor, G7. So it's always got to have that minor dominant major 7 to be a proper 251. And artists mess with that to make the tunes more interesting. We'll get into that. So let's do it in another key. Let's go um, uh, come backwards around the cycle of fifths from D. D, G. Oh, no, we just did that one. What am I talking about? From E. E. Right, E minor seven, A seven, D major seven. There's our two five one in D major. Let's do one in B flat major. B flat major is um, C minor to F seven to B flat major seven. So if we're going to do that, take the roots. We're talking C F B flat. Again, going backwards and fifths around the cycle of fifths. C minor F seven. This possibly feels a little bit more advanced for people. That's all right, because you can recognize two, five, ones by a lot of different ways now. Let's do one more. Three flats. Three flats is E flat. And the two, five is F, B flat, B flat, two, five, one. Let's take the roots. F, B flat, B flat. You see, they've gone backwards around the cycle of fifths. Got a cough, sorry. <coughs> Anyway, they've gone backwards around the cycle of fifths, and you can see F minor seven, B flat seven to E flat seven. So that is really the main ways of picking up on two five ones. Now two five ones, what we'll do is we'll put them some examples up for you, so you can see. Uh, where they come in in tunes because now you want to see them in your tunes once you've got these voicings in your hands you need them in both hands if you're perhaps supporting your own lines well you want to be able to put your coins in. your chords not your coins so you might be able to want to put the chords into your left and solo over them so both hands We'll show you more about that later. Now, so we've got to the point where we're going to show you some examples. 
A great example is autumn leaves. It's a very good lesson in two five ones, both for major and minor. We're just going to do the little opening, and you'll see that the two five ones of A minor, D seven, G seven is the opening of it. So, like if having these in your hands, even if you hadn't seen this chart before. to play something. Now these voicings I've got next are really just variations of 251s really. Okay, another good example of 251 usage um, is a tune called Blue Z. Uh, I'll just see if I can play some of it to you and talk to you at the same time. So this is always interesting, you know, talking to play. Anyway, it starts off the B flat. Okay, so this is just another thing to add to the fundamentals. Okay, thanks for watching this video. This, of course, is just another little bit of the fundamentals type knowledge that's really, really helpful for reading through lead sheets and chord charts and playing pop music and jazz music, um, learning how to deal with all this chord knowledge. So just add this to what you've learned so far. Watch the other videos again, you know, the ones about sevenths and the ones about degrees of the scale and chords numbers off the degrees of the scale, all that, add that all up and you're starting to get some understanding of what's going on here. My next 251 video will be on how to voice them. So um, that will be useful to you and we can put some um, progressions for you to practice. Just start trying to find those 251s in your charts now. And uh, any questions, ask them down below. That would be great. I love the questions. Please subscribe. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.